But when I first became a Christian, I thought it was a one and done, you know? I accept God. Look at me, I'm so special now. And I became pretty judgmental. In my first years of being a Christian uh, officially, some of my mentors uh, would tell me straight out that there were certain folks that uh, were not doing it right. They were not allowed in. Uh, that uh, you just you prayed that they would change. You prayed that in some way that they would conform to who this church was. And I, and I bought into it. I did. Because I, I felt like that was, what, was Christi- Christianity. That somehow being a Christian allowed me now to be a judge. It allowed me to know more about God and to be God's buddy and to actually sit with him and judge the rest of the world. Because my first thought of Christ was not a happy one. It was one where Christ was kind of just waiting for the world to screw up. He was waiting for people to either miss a word or say the right word in order to get into heaven, but it all had conditions on it, and he was just waiting for you to mess up. And anything that you did was going to either get you in his grace or get you into trouble, but it all depended on you. And I felt part of that. You know, I felt that it was, I'm safe, saved. And so to help that insecurity, I had to find people that weren't, and I, and I judged them. My, my view of things were a lot different than what they are now. But as, as time went on, as I continued to delve into my personal growth as a Christian, as I continued to, to read, not only read at face value, but delve deep into the words of what the context was, of what they were saying, of what the definitions were, of what the translations were, by the time it's reached us, it's gone through so many languages. You gotta dig. And the more that I did that, the more that I continued my walk with Christ, the more that I continued with my heart my walk with Christ, the more I found that the things that I was originally told was expanding. I didn't agree with it. I I agreed with some things, and I didn't agree with other things. The closer that I felt to Christ, the further I felt the need to judge. The further I felt the need to restrict the further I felt the need to make Christ's love conditional. And the more I knew that the fact that Christ loved me, well, that was a miracle enough. That's all I needed to know. Because if Christ loved me, I knew Christ is loving everybody. I went from Paul. Now, we, we call Paul this big persecutor, but sometimes we as Christians are persecuting Christians. Sometimes we as Christians are persecuting people that want to come in. Sometimes we are the same as Paul, and we think we're doing the right thing. We think that's what we stand for. What do you stand for? With Paul, it was the protection and the preservation of the Jewish faith. Some of us, we say, well, what I'm standing for is the protection and the preservation, uh, uh, whatever I said, of the Christian faith. (laughs) Every time I look at you, I script my words. Why are you doing this to me? We think we have to protect it just like Paul did. And we're hurting people. We're persecuting people. We are imprisoning them because we are doing everything that we can to keep the love of Christ from them. That's persecution and that is imprisonment. And then sometimes we grow to where we think it's conditional. Oh, God does love you. You are so welcome here. There are so many churches that say, you are so welcome here. You get into the door and they say, oh, no, wait, wait a minute, just a little bit there. You got to just tweak this and you got to do this and all that stuff. Your hair is pointing on, oh, you got to point it on the other side. And in this church, we don't even care about hair. But we just, it's all about this. It's still about judgment. It's still about becoming one of us. And then you get to this moment 
as you grow in your faith where Paul is right now in this time with Galatians and saying, you know what? We got a church full of pagans and it is awesome. It is a growing congregation and I love these people and I will defend them. I will advocate for them. Remember that word, advocation, because that is what Christ used to describe the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, he called the advocate. That means that Jesus is not there waiting for you to screw up, not there making it conditional. An advocate doesn't do that. An advocate says, I am here to fight for you. I am here to be for you. I am here to die for you. That's where my faith has grown over the years. That's where I sit now. And so one time I was at a baseball game and somebody came up and they, they, I told them that we were just starting this church and they said, well, I hope that you teach the Bible because so many churches don't. She had a weird voice. <laughs> Looked like Marvin Martian. <laughs> and I knew that by saying that, that's what she meant. And I knew that there were things that we probably wouldn't agree on. But I also knew that I could look her right in the eye and say, yeah, we do teach the Bible. We teach it deeply and meaningfully. And we follow what it says. And the deeper you get, the more you grow in that faith, the more you realize what that Bible teaches. Love God, love yourself, love your neighbor. That's what I stand for. What do you stand for?